you can see how it now springs back. Hello and welcome to another video and in this video we're going to be making some passive elastic exoskeleton actuators. For anyone new to the channel what I'm typically doing here is building my own powered armoured exoskeleton and while I will be continuing on with making my own electronic actuators I have realised that I'm going to need an interim solution for the next prototype as the actuator is probably going to take the longest thing to make which I'll explain why later on. So I want to make a passive elastic actuator of one of these prototypes that I've got here. That is cheap and easy to make, typically just 3D printed, and can assist in wearing the suit, wearing the armor, wearing the exoskeleton for now. But could probably also be a full-time solution for other projects. Before we get into this design, I'll just go over something that I want to happen with this. So I want to be able to put different types of elastic inside of this to make sure that I can change the tension where necessary. I also want to be able to have an adjustable neutral point. So for example, I don't want the neutral point and the elastic, the point where there's no resistance on it, there's no tension on it, to be just where, say, my elbow is out flat and my arm is straight. I want to be able to have that neutral point, say, in the middle and then have elastic tension going one way and the other way to assist in certain areas. For example, your arm is the best thing to think about with this. If you imagine doing a bicep curl, for example, you need help on the bicep curl part but it's typically from the bottom when your arm is straight and then you don't really need it too much when it goes to the center. As it is much easier for your arm, your own muscles to handle that angle, just being a 90 degree angle, than it is to pull your arm up from a straight position. But equally, if you were doing something above your head, the hardest position is down there with your elbow being at that acute angle, so you also want to have tension there. So the neutral point for an elbow joint, for example, would be circa 90 degrees, but this does want to be adjustable because that is different on the legs, on the hips, on the knees, and on the shoulders. So now we understand the basic premise of this, we'll go into Fusion 360 and do the design and then get it printed out. So here is the design that I've come up with. It's based on the same size and shape and bolt pan as my actuator that I'm going to be making for an electric version. That way it bolts straight onto my exoskeleton. The casing is in two parts, so if we take the top cover off, We've got this centre hub assembly with the same bolt pattern again for my exoskeleton. If we split this off so we can see the middle of this, you can see we've got this shape here. So the idea is a piece of elastic can run through the centre of this. And then you'll notice we've got these four parts here. These are to basically trap and hold the ends of the elastic to the casing. So I'll have a piece of elastic that starts there, runs around through that gap here, and then goes through the centre of the hub, through the shapes in the middle, and then back through to the other attachment point at the other side. There's four of these attachment points to give two different places where the elastic can be mounted. And then with the bolt pan of this center, you've got six bolts here with a cross for the elastic to fit through. Thereby, I've got multiple positions you can set this to, so you can change that neutral point depending on how you fit it to the exoskeleton. You can also lace the elastic in at the other side of these tensioning points. That way you've got a little bit of an offset position there as well. And if we add back in the top part of the hub, you can see we've got a place for a bearing to sit on the top here, and then the bottom is also the same. Thereby, it'll all run straight and true and smooth. And if we go onto the side of the casing, you can see the bolt holes for the tensioning system on the sides. And then add on the casing cover, and that makes it complete. So we'll get all of this printed out, and then see what it's like. While the parts are printing, I thought I'd just go over why I need this interim solution. And the reason is I've been developing my own actuator now for technically about a year. But in reality, I probably only spent about a week or so actually working on it. The issue I found with this is you don't like have enough content to actually make a full video on each time you do something on it. So when I'm trying to build a channel up, I'm trying to do a video a week, there's not that much I can do. I've still got another, another video on top of any work I do on it. And then when it comes to actually doing the work itself, for example, when it came to trying to make stators out of silicon steel, I had the issue of getting silicon steel, which I spent basically a week on and off trying to ring suppliers in the UK to see if I could get silicon steel, of which I couldn't, which then meant I had to order it off AliExpress direct from China. So that took another week or so before it turned up. And then I was trying to find someone who would actually cut the steel for me, which I failed in being able to do that which was another two weeks, and then I ended up cutting it myself on my own CNC, which wasn't ideal and took quite a lot of time to do. And had to set aside quite a lot of time for it because it took a long time, as my CNC isn't really made for steel. 
So just to try and make that silicon steel stator, it probably took me like six weeks to get 10 or 12 hours work done. So while I'm confident at succeeding on getting this to work in the end and actually being able to make my own actuators cheap, which I can then use on a robot and some other things I've got in mind, I've realized that realistically, by the time I've got my own actuators, my own motor controllers, all ready to bolt onto the exoskeleton, I'll have done the exoskeleton, done the armor, done the helmet, probably fit a load of other electronics onto it, which are just plug and play electronics, before I've actually finished these. However, in that time, I need to be able to wear it and do a mobility check and do some movements in it, make sure everything else is right, so I'm not being held up by these actuators. You might say, if these elastic actuators work well, why bother with these at all? Well, again, it's because I want to do other things with it. I also want to be able to make my own brushless motors for other projects, including maybe a petrol electric car in the future. With that said, we'll get the 3D prints out and get it built up. That's all of the pieces cleaned up and ready to go. So we're going to fit the bearings in next into the two casings. And then push the center in the big casing. With that in the center, we'll get the resistance bands, which I can go just about with the black one for this. Get them slotted through the center, work out the length, cut it off, and then tension it up. Hopefully now you get the idea of how this is gonna work. Something that you could use as well instead of the elastic is a spring, but finding a spring that is suitable in size would be more difficult to get a hold of. I've now got it assembled with the elastic in place. As you can see, I did try to actually film fitting these, but frankly, it was that fiddly, it wasn't gonna happen. But you can now see the idea, the elastic wraps around. You could change the position by having the elastic on the other side of those, or I could attach the elastic on these other points if there's a mounting issue. With the bolts fitting through to tighten it, I will cut the ends of these bolts off now so it fits better. So you can see how when you twist it, the elastic goes tight and you twist it both ways and it goes tighter both ways. Which, if we rotate it around, you can see how it now springs back. So I've got elastic assisted tension both ways with a middle neutral point. Something you can't do with gas struts and a lot of other forms of elastic techniques. So I'll get these pieces chopped off and then get the top of the casing mounted on. Then bolly on to the exoskeleton. I'm going to mount this first one onto this elbow piece so we can see what it looks like with the casing armour all built on. Partially because this is the only piece of casing armour I've got on this yet. And that is the actuator mounted on. So hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate it. You can see how it does actually spring back quite well. And then the other way, it does have a little bit of spring, but it is only slight. I also haven't put a full set of bolts in it because naturally, regular viewers of the channel will know I never order the correct bolts. But now I've proved that this actually works, we'll get the exoskeleton on and see how it actually feels. And there we go, the exoskeleton is back on in another video. I have managed to fit it on nicely with just a regular shirt instead of a compression top, which is far more comfortable and quite pleased that it feels quite good and nothing's particularly snatching on the fabric. As for the elastic actuator, I can feel it working. It's going to be hard for me to show it, but you feel it a little bit there, but then it does spring back at the bottom pretty well. And if I raise my arm up, you can feel it go elastic and get some tension about there. It's not much, I'd say it wants adjusting, maybe the elastic turning around in that housing a little bit, but it certainly works and will do the job. It in general fits around the armor casing, which for any new viewers to the channel, this is an armor casing where the composite armor will be laid into it at a later date. So while this casing is actually part of the armor, it is kind of sacrificial. However, it makes the tooling and making side a lot better. And you can see it fits nicely around the actuator as planned, moves quite nicely around it. I did have to make sure the bolts are ground off quite well to make sure it gets that clearance. But I like to think it is all coming together now. I'll need another seven of these actuators and then I can attach them onto the pelvis from the last video, 
which you'll notice these things are just swinging about at the minute. But once these legs are done in the next video, they'll be nice and secure. As you can see, I still haven't fit a sleeve onto this arm like on this arm, but I'm kind of wanting to make a greave, if you will. Something that still works as a sleeve, but has more Velcro points to get it tighter on the arm as the user desires. But yeah, pretty pleased in general. And I still need to make some more pieces of alcan fiber, get rid of those fiberglass pieces on 3D printer parts. We are certainly closing in on completion. The only thing I do need to do to these, I think, is just add a bit of a spacer on the hub drive, as there is certain ways where it can clash on bolt heads. But we're only talking about two millimeters. Which means for once, I have designed something that is nearly correct on the first go, which is very rare. And there we have it, one passive assisting elastic actuator, which I do think works quite well. It's also a pretty lightweight, which for anyone interested in making their own exoskeleton as their own project, this type of thing could be an option for you if you just want to have it a pretty basic system. Cost to make this, it was about £3.70, I think, per bearing, a couple of quid in plastic, a few pounds in bolts, and you can get a pack of resistance brands pretty cheap. So it probably cost about... I'd say around 15 pounds to make, so 15 to 20 dollars. If you are doing a more basic exoskeleton, something that might resemble, say, out of Elysium, it would probably work for that type of thing. So I'm gonna put this on Patreon in case you want the design. Probably be on over the next day or two. One thing I would possibly recommend if you were gonna use it is making more bolt holes and maybe just make this completely round. The reason I've done it like this is because I'm pretty sure this is what my actuator, electronic actuator, is actually going to look like, what the size is going to be, what the bolt pattern is going to be, that, but that's down to phases, magnets and slots, as well as the gearbox. But if I was just going to make an elastic one like this, I'd probably try and make it a little bit of a different shape, probably just round. Maybe this is slightly over 100 millimetres in width, so maybe I'd try actually make it 100 millimetres to make it easier. I'm now going to get another seven of these printed and fitted to the exoskeleton as in the next week's video I'll be doing the legs for the exoskeleton. After that it'll be the boots and ankles but I'll also be fitting in a robotic hand somewhere in there as well. But yeah I hope you enjoyed the video please like subscribe if you haven't. I've got plenty of things coming on the channel not just exoskeletons so I hope to see you in the next video and have a great day.